In this tutorial, I'm going to show you what you can do with images, or in other words, bitmaps in VinylMaster. Now there is a lot of things that you can do, so I'm just going to quickly go over some of these things, because everything I show you here has a help file in the manual, and more often than not a dedicated lesson on each of these topics, which you can watch and listen to when you're ready. So the first thing we'll do here is go to page 2, and I'll show you how to get images into the program. And there's lots of ways we can do this. We come to the file menu up here, we can import an image, we can come down here and import an image, but I'll just import it as a file. And you can see all these uh, formats we, we can choose from or select from. We can just come in and select the image we want, click open, and just insert it like that. We can also come up to this menu up here, insert image. And we can insert an image just by selecting it again, as so. Now, I've got an image on the clipboard, so I can paste it in, as you can see there. And again, I can also insert an image from here as well. So I can come down and select something else like this one here. This is also an image. The other thing we can do as well is we can come to this file menu and we can actually acquire an image. So we can bring an image in from our digital camera or from our scanner, etc. So that's ways we can get images in the, uh, in the program like that. Now the images themselves, let's move this out of the way a little bit. The images themselves behave just like regular objects. As you can see, when I select it, I can move it around like this, and I can see my preview of it. I can rotate this around, as you can see. I can click on it again, and I can, say, skew it, and again, and skew it more. I can undo all these things. I can stretch the image, squash it in each direction, resize it. I can do all these sorts of things. I can hold down my um, Alt key and I can resize it like this. I can hold down my shift key and I can resize it from the center. So as you can see, images behave very much the same as regular objects do. I can even note edit images. For example, I can zoom into this. I can go in and select the image and I can go to node edit mode. And I see all the nodes in the corner here, as so, and I can actually node edit this image. I can add nodes, as you can see. So I've got full control over how my images, are, the geometry of my images, and how I move them about and resize them and sample them in the uh, in the program here. Now, the other things we can do, I'll just resize the screen here. Okay. Other things we can do is, because the images behave as objects, we can actually do things like shaping. So, for example, if I have these two images like this, and I'll bring the fox in the front so I can, I've got my normal Z-order controls or so, and let's say I just want to punch this image out of this image. I can simply select over both of them, come over to the shaping tools, and I can use these shaping tools. So I can like punch that image out. Or I can do the opposite, I can stamp it. In other words, front minus back. So that's a uh, handy thing to know, that you can use images uh, just the same as regular objects. You can also do things like place images inside objects. So if I come here and grab a circle and draw out a circle like this, I can actually place an image inside this inside this circle, come up to Images, place image inside object, I'll grab this lioness's head and stick it in there like that. And as you can see, it just pastes it in. Now I can also uh, edit the image within the circle by going to Fill Mode. As you can see, I can move this around like so. Make it bigger and smaller, as you can see. And I can also insert other images like uh, texture fills. And each version of Vinyl Master has different texture fills, and you can see just some of these here. And I can insert any of these in, as so. And I can also use the fill mode, like so. And because it's a perfectly repeating texture, I'll get this effect here. I can resize this, and I can edit this as much as I like. So those are the sorts of things you can do. You can also crop images. So for example, if I come up to the Images uh, menu, you can see lots of options here. Click on Crop. I can use the mouse like this. And I can crop the image like that, and I can focus in removing all this extra uh, part of the image I don't want, and click Accept, and there you can see I've now got the image cropped like that. And then I may want to resample this image now that I've cropped it, so I can go up to Images and I can resample this image, and I can reset the number of pixels that I'm using to display this image, and rescale it, uh, and change the filters, etc. So I've got those sort of controls, and that's ideal for large format printing. So I can click Accept there so I can resample the image. Now, we can also convert objects to uh, images. So our vector objects can be converted into images. Now, I'll just go up to the window here and down to uh, 3D effects here. Now, you can see some of this um, 
sort of staircasing going on here. This, these are, this is just a standard um, uh, 3D effect here. So I can select this each individual item here, as you can see, and you can see this is a 3D effect. Now, what I can do here is I can convert this whole thing to an image. So select over it like this, come to images, go convert to bitmap. I can set a whole bunch of parameters like the resolution, whether it's a transparent background or a solid background, as you can see. I can click OK, and you can see here it processes that, and now you can see how smooth this has become in here. So if I click Undo, you can see the staircasing effect when it's a vector. Now this would print perfectly as a vector, but if you wanted to use it as artwork, say in a PDF file for your client's business card or whatever, you could convert it to a bitmap or into an image, and you get this absolutely beautifully uh, smoothed over effect like that by converting this to a bitmap. So it's another thing we can do with images. So go back to where we were working before. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you too is this Savannah dock here. This is an example of cropping or placing an image inside a circle. These sorts of effects you can do like this. So I'll go back to our images again. Okay. Now we can also adjust images. Now I'll bring in an image which is probably more appropriate for adjusting. This one here is good because it's got this, uh, this, this blue effect. Now if I wanted to adjust this image, what we'll do is we'll just put these out of the way. I'll delete a couple of these that we don't want. Okay, so we might want to adjust the uh, brightness or the saturation and these sorts of things of this image here. Now it's very easy to do. We can go down to Images and we can come down to Adjust and we can click on some of these things like brightness for example. And what we see here is our Object Manager and our Property Inspector come up. We just look at our property inspector like this and we get these tools here. And I can just simply, as you can see, adjust all these controls for this image directly from the property inspector. So I can increase and decrease my contrast, my brightness. I can reset it by just typing in zero. I can set things like my gamma controls, set it back to zero. I can really saturate this image, as you can see, or I can completely desaturate it and turn it into grayscale. So I have lots of options here, and as you can see there's more here, uh, options to adjust images in the, um, in the property inspector. So it's a good thing to know about this because a lot of the th controls, as, I can, as you can see, I can select images together and I can control them simultaneously. So it's a great tool, the property inspector. I'll just put that away for a moment. I'll just undo that. So I'll just go back to the image as it was. So that's how we do those sorts of adjustments. Now we've also got a dedicated module for doing that. Come to the Images drop down here and get into and click on Image Editor, as so. We get this uh, this window up, and again we get some more advanced controls in here. I can really start. You can see I can turn that to a, like a yellow effect. I can also reset this. I can make that more red. Um, you know, I can I can adjust these sorts of settings as you can see. Some of these will have effects on different images in different ways. I can make the sky more purple, more blue, more cyan. You know, these are the sorts of effects I can do with these tools here. I can reset all these and uh, I can I can also set things like saturation here. I can set it to grayscale, I can set my brightness, you know, these sorts of things, gamma controls. So I can really adjust what an image looks like as you can see there. Now I can go to the advanced button here and I get even more uh, uh, powerful tools. I can blur this image if I like. So I'll apply this to all these channels. So I can blur it and I can set how blurry I want it to be. I can apply it so it's less blurry, more blurry. And I can go really silly here and make it very blurry, but that depends on what my artwork is. I, I might want that effect. I can reset it back to normal. I can reduce the color count, for example. I can turn this into, say, a 16 color uh, image, as you can see, or I can turn it into a, th a 32 color. You know, I can do all these sorts of things. I can also do things like these special effects here. For example, I can do a mosaic effect. And if I click here like this, you can see what's happening here. It sort of like pixelates it the more I slide it along, as you can see. So I can create any number of these sorts of effects. Uh, another example is um, emboss. And if I set that to say one there, you can see how it embosses it. Or I can do things like fisheye. And that will just process that, take a moment, and you can get these fisheye effects. We can do spotlights, and we can do solarizing, for example. This is quite an effect. You can do these sorts of things like this. 
posterize. I mean, there's just so many of these that you can you can work with and do some quite interesting uh, interesting things with your images. So there's lots of um, there's lots of these uh, special effects you can play around with, like things like this. So there's lots of special effects and lots of things we can do to images, and when we just click accept, it comes in with our uh, changes, and we can just undo that if we want to. Uh, other things we can do is things like um, pixel editing. For example, let's say this client gave us their image here and they said, look, I don't really like this strawberry anymore, for example. You can remove it. You simply come into the images here and click on edit image. This comes up like so, and I can just basically uh, use this pixel editing here, and I can just delete this stuff out, as you can see. Now that I've done that, I'll just close that out, save it, comes up and now the, uh, the strawberry's gone. So I can uh, edit my pixels like that um, and do those sorts of effects. Okay, I can also do things like duotone. For example, if I come in here and go insert image, I'll find something that suits a duotone effect. Um, oh, perhaps this owl does. So click in this here and we can do things like these sorts of effects, duotone. If I turn that on, I get the standard duotone effect and then I can come back in here and I can actually edit this. So I can do this like, uh, for example, this sepia effect. So go to some sort of browny sort of colour, click apply and uh, probably a light grey, probably too, too stark there. Let's bring that back a bit. And you can get these old fashioned photo type effects like this, these sepia effects with duotone, which is down here in duotone. So those are the sorts of things we can do there. Now we can also create a mask. Now I'll show you how that works. If I select this image here, you can see that when we have an image selected that in our second row of tools we get all these image tools here. So if I go create a mask here, I'll just resize this to fit our screen. I can actually use some of these tools here. I'll just zoom into this area here like this. I can use things like the fat line by clicking into certain key areas like this. Just quickly show you how to remove the mask. Uh, add to the mask I should say. So I can just click apply there and I can create a see-through area as you can see there. I can use tools like this one here to remove larger areas in one big foul swoop like this and I can use my pan tool. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing the background of this image by creating a mask as you can see. I can just keep going through like this. I'll just quickly uh, just keep showing you this because it's important you can see how easy it is to remove uh, the background of an image as so. And now we can go to the uh, magic brush and you can see this little thing. I mean that's pretty cool how it removes the uh, background like that as you can see. And you can zoom right into areas like this and make that a uh, little bit bigger and a little bit more aggressive. And before you know it, as you can see, you can go around like this as so. I can zoom around here. I just want to show you quickly how to do this so you can see that how easy it is to remove this as I've just said and um, none of this is contrived mind you it's not like I'm starting and stopping this lesson this lesson's done or this tutorial I should say is done in one sitting it's not started and stopped and all contrived let's quickly remove the background there like that as you can see Remove it like that. This area gets a little bit tricky in here because it's not, and you can right click to bring it back. It's not entirely clear for the program to work out, you know, what really is the background and what's the foreground here. I mean, the computer has absolutely no idea at all. But you can see it does a pretty good job with this masking, uh, with this magic brush. And I can just come back to this tool here, which removes it without question, as we can see here. And before you know it, you can, whoops, wrong tool. I can say so I can click undo, that's fine. Go to the magic brush here again sort of bring it in here like this, bring that back a bit and I'll just uh, zoom out, zoom to all here and you can see very quickly, I mean that hasn't hardly taken any time at all, I removed the, the bulk of the background there, I click accept and you can see it see through, Whoop, bring it to the front, order to front and you can see it's pretty much see through there. Now when, when it comes to masks, if we go to page 3 here you can see on this particular example I've spent a bit more time and, uh, and I've created that mask there, but it's exactly the same thing. I can turn the mask on and off, as you can see. Oops, 
Why is that not doing that? Oh, maybe I didn't have it selected properly. That's better. All right, so you can see the mask here. I can zoom back into there like that. And you can see how well it's removed that background. And I can select on this and I can bring it back into the mask editor and I can keep working on it and change things. Like I can sharpen this mask up by clicking on that a few times and click accept. And you can see now it's a little bit sharper around the edges here. Or I can come here and I can blur it a bit. I can set the blur to say 10. And you can see how it's nice and blurry here. Click accept. And you can see how it's blurred it out a bit. So these are the, I'll undo that so you can see. And I'll undo it again. And now it's gone back to the way it was. That's how we can, uh, you know, apply a mask. So we can easily remove the background of our images using the mask, uh, the mask tool, which is a very handy tool to have. Here's another example of it. I can turn the mask off, and as you can see, I can turn it back on. How well it can remove a background for you. Really quite extraordinary, and it doesn't take long at all, as I showed you before. You can remove a remove a background very quickly. Back on, back off. Oops, let's select back on it, like that, and. You can see that you can add and remove the background of an image uh, incredibly easily and uh, very quickly, in fact, using some of those uh, some of those tools. So that gives you an example of that. Now, another reason why we want to create masks is so we can create contour cut lines. So I'll just copy that image there. I'll go back to page two here. And I'll paste that in there. Remove that one. I'll remove this here, and uh, we'll make this a bit bigger. I wanted to show you here how you can do contour cutting. So if we want to create a decal out of this or a sticker and um, you know cut that, print it and then cut it out using our large format uh, digital printer, we can do that. I can say, I don't know, Ferrari sales. I'm just going to do this for a bit of fun here just to give us an idea of what we're doing. Um, I'll leave it as aerial, that's fine. Now, make it bold though, and make it red, and we'll give it a little outline. So we've got this, you know, some made up uh, little sign here for somebody or a decal, a bumper sticker or something. All we can do is we can select over this whole thing, click both of them, sorry, and come out here to contour cutting. And you can see that it automatically detects that there's an image here. So you say, yes, I do want to do this. Now this is all automated. The program just goes through uh, and it actually traces the image. As you can see, and it returns it back to us. And now we can create a contour cut line. And as you can see, it's doing exactly that. So I can click accept. And now I've created a contour cut line, and I can send that to my large format uh, printer cutter, and I can print this image out, and then it will come along and cut out the uh, outside, so I can make decals and stickers and things. So that's a great way of doing that. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. So I'll just delete that, undo that. Okay. Now, something else I want to show you is some of the gradient tools. Now, this image here is probably good enough for this, so I'll just move this out of the way. Okay, so we'll have a look at this here, and I'll show you some of these sorts of effects we can do with the mask editor. So what I'm going to do here is I'll bring in, I've got a tiger down here somewhere. Where is that tiger? Here it is. So I can bring this image in, and I'm going to make it the same size. And you'll see because these are objects, they snap together like that. And I'm just going to position that roughly there. And I'm going to apply a gradient fill to this. I'll show you what I mean by that. Open this up here. And we select on this tool here, Linear Gradient. And we do this trick like this. And we click Apply. Might do one more, just so that it's quite clear on this uh, edge here. Click Accept here. You can see what's actually happening. What we're doing here is we're applying this image on top of this one. So this image is on top of this image. But with this Linear Gradient tool, we get the effect of blending the images together. Now what I can do is send that to the back like that. And I can crop out this area that we don't want. So I just select off it, click on it. I go up to the Images menu, click Crop like this, bring that back, and I can crop that. Now I can bring that back to the front, and I select both the images, left, top, and you can see now I've blended this image on top of this image here. And I can come back, and I can edit this even more if I want to by doing this sort of thing here, as so. And I can click Apply, and click Accept and I can change how much I'm blending this. And if I turn the mask off, you can see what's happened. I can now turn it back on and you can see how it blends it in just beautifully like that. So we have these sorts of controls and tools that we can do with images. We can blend images together. And I can keep doing this. I don't have to stop there. I could blend the fox on here if I wanted to. So what I can do is I can make the fox the same size by snapping it to the top like that, coming down like this, and I can blend the fox on. 
Now, what I might want to do is remove this green uh, beforehand. So the first thing I might do is just quickly grab the fill tool here, and you can see how quickly I can remove the background with this fill tool, um, or flood fill. Just undo that one because I started to take that out. Come here with the magic brush, and I can just ever so slightly clean this up a little bit. So I can do this effect like so, and use this tool here just to get rid of the bulk of this. And I can always change the background color so I can see a better better information here as you can see. Now I can click accept there. Now what I want to do is I want to blend this in. So I might just uh, move that back a bit as so and now I can come here and again with a linear gradient tool I can do this sort of effect. Apply, maybe one more just for good measure. Click accept and now I've got this, this sort of blended uh, situation going on and again I can just crop this out. I come up to the images menu, go crop get rid of all this extra part of the image we don't want, slide that in like that, select the other image, just go right to align it automatically, and as you can see I'm blending images together like this. And I can keep doing this and I can make all sorts of effects. You can imagine that you've got a client who wants a really special effect with images, it's really quite easy to do using these tools. Uh, so that's that how that works. Okay, and other things we can do of course with uh, the image effects tools are uh, do things like um, vignettes. So, well, we'll use the Linus's head here again, and I'll show you how to create a vignette with this tool. You can simply come in here, click on this object here, make it say circle, um, give it a bit of feathering, click accept, and now I've got a vignette like that. And you can adjust these things and go to far greater detail than I'm doing here. These are just very quick ways of showing you how you can use this mask tool, which is a very powerful tool for doing this sort of things. Now the other thing with distortions, oh sorry, with images is you can apply distortions to them. So for example, if I just bring in a, um, I don't know, I'll bring in uh, this duck here, for example, I can apply distortions to this duck. I can uh, do any of these distortions here, I can make it say 3D, and as you can see, you can apply distortions. And I can apply distortions to distortions as you can see like this and just resets it all. So I can apply distortions on top of each other. Uh, so you can do all those sorts of things too. Applying distortions to, uh, to images. Now an example of uh, other things you can do is like vector effects. So I'll just move all this stuff out of the way. And we'll just zoom in a little bit more to this here. And I'll show you some of these vector effects you can apply. Again, this is the, back on the concept that images are basically the same as objects or work just the same as objects. So the first thing I need to do is trace this image. So if I go to the image tools here, and I can just trace this. It just does it automatically. I really don't have much to do here. Off it goes. Click trace now. This is another powerful tool, this vectorizer. And uh, once that's completed, this takes a moment. Click accept. This has now got a contour a trace around the mask, as we can see with this dotted line here. But I can now come in and apply things like a uh, an outline like this, or a multi-outline for example. And I can change things by, if I select on this and go to the multi-outline tool, I can say make this gradient effect and then I could sort of make this red going to say uh, another red and what we'll do is we'll just change this to a very dull red. And you can see you can make all these sorts of effects. So you can really do any number of uh, tricks with um, with images using this uh, ve uh, vectorizing idea around the edge here, and then applying these uh, distortions and um, distortions and um, outline effects and vector effects that you can apply to these things. So I'll just remove that for a moment. Now, other things we can do, we can you know put stripes through this if we want to. So I can put like 20 stripes through here. Um, click accept, and you can see you can put stripes through an image. So all the uh, I'll just undo that. All the vector effects like these, you can apply these to images. Uh, you can even do things like drop shadows and uh, you could I'll just undo that. You could also do things like a block shadow. Whether or not you'd want to, I mean that's another issue, but the fact is is that you can do these things and uh, you have these sorts of controls. So these are the sorts of things we can do to images on top of just regular type, you know, uh, effects and things. Um, you can also, for example, I'll bring in another image. You can even apply special effects to images. So if I bring this one in, let's say we wanted to make this uh, look
look like it's a glass effect or something on here. We can come here, we can go to say highlights and we can edit this here and I'll just push this over a little bit over to the side here and we'll come to the shading tools here and we can actually adjust this uh, this thing here. We can you know adjust our lighting where we want to put it and we might make it a little bit brighter and we can do things like change our bevel so we can do these bevel effects here and we can do this sort of effect so it, you can actually apply special effects as I'm showing you here you can even put on a reflection map if you wanted to you put the lioness's head on there uh, onto, the, uh, onto the image if you wanted to so these are the sorts of things you can do with images you can apply all sorts of effects um, and you know do all manner of things as we can see here I'm just adjusting some of these settings here we can get different sort of looks on our images but you know you need to experiment with those things to see the sorts of things you can do it just goes on and on the list just goes on and on now another thing we can do too we're coming to the end of this tutorial now I've shown you so many things you can do with images there's a lot more you can do I mean for example you can set the opacity how see-through an image is um, whoops okay so we go to the uh, for example I'll just well you see the opacity there but I just want to show you the opacity here okay I'll bring that to the front shift page up okay so I'll show you how I can make this image by putting this on above everything and I can come down to the fill and I can set its opacity and I can bring this down and I can actually make the image itself transparent so I can make it sort of semi see-through if I turn that right back off you see it's a full image so not only have I got this linear gradient effect here that we've had here before with the fox's head and the the lion uh, the tiger sorry you can also do that to the image itself holistically across the entire image so that's some of the sorts of things you can do there and as I say I can go on and on and on uh, this tutorial would go on, go on forever if I kept doing that I'll just create a new page here I just want to show you something uh, another thing you can do which is really important to know about which is vectorizing uh, so I'll just oh this France uh, image is good so bring that up like this now we want to vectorize this so at the moment if I go into wireframe mode you can see here that this is just an image this isn't uh, there's nothing no information here that's cuttable now I can show you that better but if I go to um, edit this image and bring it up in here and we zoom in you can see uh, it's just pixels okay that's all this is is pixels so there's nothing no information here to cut great for printing you could print this out and it'd look great but you can't cut it so just close out of there and bring it back up in here and go to regular view so I want to vectorize this I want to turn all these edges into cuttable paths that I can um, I can then cut out with my vinyl cutter that's really easy we come up to this drop down vectorize trace you can see the program just goes through vectorizes it I can set the number of colors I want here I'll leave white as uh, non traceable there's no point in tracing white that'd be a waste of time click trace now again I just want to make the point this lesson's being done or this tutorial has been done in one sitting I'm not chopping and changing this and starting and stopping it and these things are all done in real time and you can see how fast it is so I click accept and uh, you can see that I'll just go to wireframe mode let's trace that and it's turned it into instantly into something that's cuttable so you can actually trace your images like this and uh, turn them into cuttable vectors and then send them to your um, your vinyl cutter and you can see here it's got all these pieces ready to go ready to cut for your large format or for your sorry for your vinyl cutter so incredibly easy to uh, convert images into vectors and then cut them out so they're just some of the things you can do and there are plenty of others the main point is is that you can do a lot of things with images in vinyl master and uh, as I said in the beginning of this tutorial you can go and see the help uh, the manual on all these different subjects and different topics and things that you can do with images it's just the main point is is that you should take your time and look at all these things and look at the different lessons and you'll be quite amazed the sorts of things that you can create in vinyl master with images and the effects and things you can do as I've shown you just some of them here so that's the end of this tutorial